ago, when school bells rang like this, across Arkansas, children ran down dirt roads and country lanes with books under their own. Those children are grown now, and the schools are all disappeared. But the memory and the lessons that were learned are a great part of our history. In Columbia County, we carry great pride for our black schools in our community. In the time of segregation and social injustice, people began to work together in our schools to bring forth a better life. In the time when black people had few material possessions, we still had a place we called our own. A place we call our own. A History of Black Schools in Columbia County, Arkansas. A presentation by Southwest Arkansas Community Development Corporation. A Place We Call Our Own was made possible by grants from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and the Arkansas Humanities Council. Special assistance was provided by VISTA volunteers and students of Magnolia High School. Hello. I'm Malvie Giles, 1947 graduate of Columbia High School. And I'm Tammy Sims, a VISTA worker with Southwest Arkansas Community Development Corporation. We're here at the Walker School District near Magnolia, a starting point of our trip back in time. Our story begins in the Reconstruction period after the Civil War when a lot of black people moved to Arkansas. That's right, Tammy. In the late 1800s, people came to Arkansas from Mississippi and Louisiana looking for a better life. They were farmers mostly, and they lived in rural communities across Columbia County. The first structures they built for their communities were the church and the school. Why did people think it was so important to build schools? Education was the way to protect their land ownership and their new freedom through the vote. The school and the church were the center of the community. But back then, the law required separate schools for black and white children. That was the law. But most black schools only went to the sixth grade. The students were in class just for a few months. The rest of the year, they had to work on the farm. Most of the teachers were men. Some had gone to college in Little Rock or Pine Bluff. But many only had a high school diploma. Still, they were the most educated people in the community. And they were committed to helping young people learn. So all across Columbia County, there were black communities with one-room schoolhouses. I guess kids had it pretty rough. It was rough. They had wood stoves and water wells out in the yard. All grades were in the same room. Students even had to buy their own books. But it was all we had, and people made the best of it. That's different from a school like this. Mrs. Darlene Shepard was superintendent of the Walker School District. Tell us about the history of your school. Walker School got its start with consolidating in 1939 with five other school districts. Burton, Mount Com, Wilburn, West Elementary, and Noxubee combined together to make Walker School District and Walker. B.G. Williams was the superintendent, first superintendent, and he came from the Walker School. That is why it was named Walker School District. B.G. was the first superintendent who did great things to bring it together, and he stayed with this school district for 21 years. So we always look to him as the father of the school district. The first gymnasium classroom was built in 1939 by the WPA, and the West family contributed the first two acres of land for the school to be situated on. We always will strive for excellence, and we will nurture and care and motivate the students. We feel that the utmost goal of Walker faculty and administration is to push the students, motivate them, and let them have a successful life. Walker School District is a rare exception in Columbia County. In most cases, like here at Forest Grove, 
Not even a building has been left behind. Oh, that's a shame because black schools would provide jobs for educated people and their leadership in the community. And like here in the country churches, or like Forest Grove, land was donated so that schools could be built. Where was the school? Back in the woods there, but there's nothing there today. I want Jesus to walk with me. You know, at one time, there was 18 independent black school districts and as many as 34 black schools in Columbia County. An article from the Magnolia newspaper in 1939 lists these names. The money to build many of these public schools was donated by the Rosenwald Foundation in Chicago. Some schools were built by the WPA, a federal program during the Depression. And in addition to all these public schools, there were church academies and other private schools serving the black community. Where were all these schools? Today, we have six school districts in Columbia County, and some people think that's too many. I can't imagine 18. Remember, there were 18 black districts, Tammy. There were probably an equal or greater number of small white districts as well. The idea of separate school districts for blacks and whites was accepted by society at this time. Racial integration would not become an issue until many years later. But there were far too many schools and not enough money to support them. One result was that black schools were poorly funded. Our school had more students per class and the teachers got paid less than white teachers. The most of our students never went past the elementary grades. Well, there weren't many high schools at this time. Right here at Forest Grove was a high school, and just a little ways away was another high school, the famous McMitris. Well, I've got a graduation yearbook from McMitris, The Raven, the class of 1955. Let's take a look. The school was first started at the Pine Hill Church. Later, it was called Doss Academy for the families that donated the land. In 1929, the old McMitry School was built. At first, it was just an elementary school, but grades were added until it became a high school. The first graduating class was in 1937. The high school continued until 1949 when McMitry's was consolidated into the Emerson School District. In 1950, a new school was built. The new McMitchers had a separate elementary building, a separate building for agriculture and shop, and a new gym with bleachers for 1,000 people. In 1951, the Ravenettes, the girls' basketball team, were state champs. The new McMitchers operated until 1969 when all students began attending Emerson School, and it's in McMitchers had 19 faculty and more than 700 students. How did McMitchers get its name? The three men that helped get the new school built were Ed McQuiston, State Supervisor of Education, Mr. Mitchell, the architect, and Mr. Childress, the Negro Supervisor of Education. So they took part of each man's name, Mac from McQuiston, Mitt from Mitchell, and Rez from Childress. Mac, Mitt, Driss. McMitchers. Oh, I bet there are not a lot of people that know that. It's kind of sad, you know. These schools are gone, and there's nothing to remember them by. Well, the buildings may be gone, but there's still some parts that remain. Come on, girl, let's go. I've got something to show you. This is the site of the West Side Elementary and High School. In 1970, this site became a member of the Waldo School District. And this sign is all that's left? Oh, the memory still lives on in the students and, and the reunions that come forth. Teachers touch the lives of their students in many ways through memories. And when I went to school there, didn't even have a kindergarten. We went straight from the first grade to the twelfth grade. Okay. Those teachers made sure that when, you, when I pitched it, you caught it. You know, that the West Side influence kind of made that thing happen. Schools like Westside were the center of the black community. What happened in the 1930s and 40s to change that? The biggest change 
was the, de the depression. When there were few jobs and no ways to make a living, people moved away. So when black schools started losing their students, they joined the white district? That's right. We now had single school districts that operated a dual system. There was one administration, but separate schools for blacks and whites. This was the period they called separate, but equal. Separate, but not equal. Many of the blacks had to shut down their schools for planting and harvesting their crops. So therefore, their school year was much shorter than the white schools. Blacks Principals and teachers were paid far less than the whites. I've heard about how books were handed down from the white schools. When black students got them, the covers and open page has been taken off. It's hard to imagine how people would accept that. Why wasn't something done? Just wasn't time yet, Tammy. Segregation was strictly enforced, and many public facilities were off limits to blacks. At this time, we were only about 60 or 70 years out of slavery. Black people just did not know how to handle their rights. What did the schools do about that? The black schools taught American history and the ideas of democracy, and school leaders like B.G. Williams brought these issues to public attention. Williams was superintendent of Walker School and president of the state Black Teachers Association. We cannot be timid souls and expect justice to be automatically given to us. Whoever attempts to withhold our just rights from us robs us of our birthright. B.G. Williams, President, Arkansas Teachers Association, 1953 Annual Meeting. So once again, our school leaders also were our community leaders. That's right. Society was changing. But the black schools in Columbia County were providing as much education for the young people that they could provide. Black schools had basketball, football, and track team, and they competed against other black schools in state tournaments. We had school choirs, pep squads, drama clubs, and proms. And we had field days when schools would come together for competition in spelling, history, and other subjects. Black teachers took a personal interest in their students. Our teachers had close relationship with parents and families. They were our church Sunday school teachers, and they kept the school at the center of life in the community. In the early days, many schools were connected with small churches like here at Mount Com. But changes in society brought an end to community schools. In 1948, Arkansas law required that small school districts consolidate. Well, they joined together, but it still did not work out. Black schools eventually had to join the white school districts. In 1949, Walker School was the only black school district in the county. And it all started in small churches like this. I think I heard the services. Let's go in. Mount Carmel Baptist Church was organized in the year of 1900, and following that, a school was organized here as well for the education of the young people, of the people of the community. And the community was blessed by the school, and of course, the school by the community. Later, it was consolidated Walker School, and many was blessed spiritually, educationally, if they could succeed here they could succeed anywhere in this world. We lost our school, and that was a central, that was a focus point. The school and the church were two focus points. And once you lost the school, that was part of your focus gone. Um, there was a family of students and a school board member that were, their families were connected. The black family worked for the white family. And they missed school to do it. They, they weren't on a salary. They were just on whatever he gave them. And this man was a school board member. And I cried about it. 
because I finally found out. I kept asking every day, what happened to this ch to these children? Where were they? And all of a sudden, this one day, this girl spoke up and said, "They're farming." It it it, it got me. It really got me, and I went to the principal and I asked him, I said, why is this man a school board member? I said, he's telling these kids they are not worth anything. He makes them go to work. He makes them stay in that field. You know, he doesn't just specifically say so, but when he tells the parents, then that filters down to the kids. They work because they had to. They, they were not given a choice of whether they could work. But looking at the past, appreciate the fact that you've got the opportunity to get an education, value it, make it something that's important. You can't get it taken away from you if you do it that way. Father, many of the students here at Free Hope School, Rucker Clayton was the role model. He was elementary principal of the school and still is the most outstanding leader in this area. Mr. Clayton, tell us about Free Hope and the education people got here. This school has been on this site ever since 1926 and I came here in 1945. It has had up to nine teachers, 265 students, grade one through ten. We are now in the auditorium, which we use for several different purposes. The lower part of the auditorium used for the 5th, 6th, and 7th, and 8th grade, just to the, in the other wall, other part of the building, to the right, with the wall separating, were used for the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd grade, and the room just little adjacent to the 1st and 2nd grade and 3rd grade room were used for the 8th, 9th, and 10th grade. We had a room to the, another building, to the left that we used for manual training purposes and home economics. I think it's wonderful that buildings like this can still serve the community. When segregation ended, buildings were torn or even destroyed. We can put an exact date on the end of segregation. It was the 1954 decision of the Supreme Court. In the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. United States Supreme Court, May 15, 1954. Columbia County Schools came up with a policy that talked about freedom of choice, which allowed students to choose where they wanted to go or whichever school they chose. That really didn't happen. Some black people began attending white schools, but some people wanted to stay in their own schools. Black and white communities were not ready to come together yet. Well, real change didn't take place until 1970 when Arkansas brought forth the rule to integrate. We know that the old buildings were abandoned. What else happened? When the separate black schools were phased out, many black teachers and principals lost their jobs. This was terrible for the black community. Our role models and community leaders were gone. Yes, it took a while to make people realize how they can make things better. Black schools gave us that. You know, these old buildings can still help us in our communities. My school is a good example of that. Columbia High School, in the center of Magnolia, has always been a source of pride for this community. This is where you went to school? I spent my childhood on this campus. I lived nearby. I would hear the school bell ring and rush to get to class so that I wouldn't be late. What is the history of this site? In 1914, the Magnolia School District bought the site for $200. A two-story wooden building was constructed and an elementary school was started for black children. It was called the Magnolia College School and Mr. Charlie Green was principal, a position he held for 27 years. 
Mr. Fairbanks Wuffington became principal in 1942, and he stayed on until 1969. In its final 20 years, Columbia added several new buildings, a gym, an elementary school, a cafeteria, and a large auditorium, and student enrollment continued to grow. In the 1970s, when integration brought an end to the Columbia High School, there were 24 teachers working here and more than 800 students on campus each day. What were some of the students' activities? There was a full music department and band. Our choirs traveled to competitions in Little Rock and other cities and came home as champions. Our athletes were the Magnolia Isles, and our girls' basketball team were state champions in 1952 and 53. There were pep squads, cheerleaders, drama clubs, library clubs, science clubs, and there was student government. Columbia has really made a valuable contribution to Magnolia. Let's listen to what another Columbia alumni has to say about it. I think Columbia had a very positive effect on the black community. It helped give us a sense of identity. It provided a focal point for activities, thus giving the students and the parents a sense of ownership in their school. Black children had a chance to see black women and men in leadership positions. Yes, Columbia was my school. From it came added inspiration, motivation, and pride in self-fulfillment and achievement of goals. In a sense, it was my lighthouse, and although it no longer exists in the true physical sense, it will always have a hallowed place in my memory. Today, Columbia School is home to Southwest Arkansas Community Development Center. Dwight Holmes is Executive Director. Dwight, tell us more about your organization. The Southwest Arkansas Community Development Corporation is a grassroots organization dedicated to low and middle income individuals to help themselves. We have focused on the area of community development and one cultural center, two housing, and three child care. At this site and cultural center in Magnolia, Arkansas, we want people to know where they came from in order to know where they need to go. Two, in housing, we want to develop affordable housing in the area of rental and home ownership. And three, child care Child care is our largest project. We have done extensive renovation here at the Magnolia site. The number of children that we have here, uh, we're licensed for 117 children here at Magnolia, and we're licensed for 42 kids at the Louisville Center in Louisville, Arkansas. Welfare reform in Arkansas is playing a crucial role in forced child care in individuals going back to work or going to school. All in all, what we're trying to do here is empower people to help themselves in their communities. Calhoun Heights is another former black school that is still contributing to the community. John Moore is the superintendent of the Magnolia School District. Dr. Moore, could you tell us what this building is still being used as? This building serves as an integral part of the uh, Magnolia School District and serving as our headquarters for our, for our adult education program adult education providing that second go around for our second opportunity for people. This former black school serves as our adult education facility serving our entire community. We cannot function as separate educational systems. Black schools taught us that people can make the best of what they have. That is a lesson for all people. Years ago, black students saw their parents and other adults working on farms, at sawmills, and at laundries. They saw them working as cooks or domestics. They saw their parents working hard to make life better. It showed them that improvement only came through effort. Columbia County's black schools told us we had to learn for our parents and for ourselves. They told us that we needed to strive for higher things. Schools like Columbia and Walker unified the black community. They took the message that students received at home and gave it real opportunity at the school. The home, the school, and community all came together.
It gave us a new sense of who we were and what we could do with our lives. There was just always uh, more or less a friendly atmosphere at Walker. We were just like, a one, just like one big family. But at the same time, we could adhere to the, the business at hand. We had a lot of fun. Um, but uh, as one of the benefits that I aforementioned was the benefit for growth, for professional, personal, and uh, uh, growth in other, uh, other ways. The history of Columbia County Black Schools has many gains and losses. Students may have lost in caring and motivation, but they have gained in information and opportunities. Our schools continue to reflect changes in society. Looking back, we see that integration itself was not the accomplishment we were after. It was the educational benefits that came from integration. Years ago, Black students had to make their own opportunities. Today, students only have to take the opportunities given to them. So our challenge today is to remember where we've come from and the progress we've made. We've got to use that history to motivate people to success. Today, all people can work together. All people can contribute to our society. Today, people can create within our schools a place that we all can call our own. 